everyone here. Welcome to another episode of Nothing, my second Let's Play video. This one will be to give you a little bit of an intro or a how-to uh, in the world of Warcraft. A bit about the game, how to play the game, etc. So you can see uh, characters here. This is a high-level character on uh, the Realm Sargeras, which is a PvP server. PvP is player versus player. Here is a different type of character. She is a demon hunter as opposed to a regular hunter, which was the first character. So there are different classes in this game that you can play. I'm going to create a brand new character for the purposes of this video. You can do a trial of a level 100 character um, to see kind of how the class is higher up. Or you can start from level 1, well, as everyone does. There's female and male, and there's two factions, Alliance and Horde. Alliance, you can be human, or um, you could be human, you can be dwarf, night elf, no, Draenei, or worgen. Now, on the horde side, your these are races, by the way. You can be orc, undead, tauren, troll, blood elf, or goblin. Pandaren, as you can see on the bottom, are actually the first neutral race to have ever come to this game. And they don't start off as either Alliance or Horde. You play them through to level 10 or so, and then you choose. choose. Now every race has classes, as you can see on the right here. Um, if the class is highlighted like that, that means you can select it for this particular race to play. For example, she can be a warrior as a Pandaren. But um, if and you can actually click on the class and it'll give you some basic information about the race and the class. So when it's highlighted like that, when you can select it, then you can play it. And it'll also tell you, if it's not selected, um, if you can't select it basically, then that means that race cannot play that class. I always tend to choose Blood Elf. I just prefer Blood Elf. I'm gonna make a mage. A mage is a caster class. And it doesn't really matter because right now this is mostly just to show you guys. Now, for, like for example, you can, when you customize your character, you can choose skin colors. These are all the different options of a skin color that you can select for a female blood elf. Ranging from dark to light. I usually, um, I prefer for my blood elves to be very supernatural looking, so I'll make them extremely pale. Um, you can also select from different faces. These are all the different face options for a female blood elf. Whichever one you select, you can then see it on your character, see how it would look on her or him. I always choose the same one for my blood elves as well. I just make the same type of character across the board. It's just a habit. Now, these are the different hairstyles. And there's a lot more hairstyles now than there were originally when um, these races were released. They did not come with World of Warcraft in the beginning. They were the this was the first horde side race that was released with the Burning Crusade expansion. And at the time, I think there was only five or seven different hairstyles, but there's a lot more now. Some of which overlap with the human females, and some of which are just new which is nice. You, there is an option in game to go to a barbershop and change your appearance, but it is also nice to have these kind of options off the bat. But when you do go to the barber to change your hair, for example, you will get options that you have not even seen here that are completely different from this. But you still get a very, very big choice. You know, I'm actually not sure which one I want to do. There's, um, there's one hairstyle that I always get um, I always put on my female blood elves, and that is this one. But, I don't know, I feel like I want to give her something else, maybe. I definitely always do the same color, which is white. Just, again, I go for the supernatural look. As white as possible skin and white hair. It's just a preference. But you can have other choices here. There's even two versions of white. There's like a white white, like a silver white, or like an almost like platinum blonde sort of white. 
I'm gonna go ahead and actually switch the, to the curly hair style. I just, I don't know, she just, they've updated what it looks like and it looks so much nicer now, so. You can select earrings as well. Unfortunately, um, because of the hairstyle chosen, you can't really see the lobe part. You could see in this one because the hoops are rather large, but you can't really see the others, which are like danglies or studs. Some of them are red, some of them are green, some are just gold. Some of them are on the edge of the ear, as you can see the hoops here. I think there's two or three. There's Yes, there's three selections. One with hoops, one with studs, and I think one with just a little tiny hoop on one of the ears. I tend to do the same earrings every time as well, The these hoops. <clears throat> and then once you complete, you just click finish. And your character is ready to enter the world. This is what a starter Blood Elf Mage looks like. You click on enter world. You are shown the Burning Crusade loading screen because she is a Burning Crusade race character. She did not exist until the Burning Crusade expansion. And the first time you zone into the world, you are given a bit of a cutscene, which is like a cinematic sort of span into the starting area of the character with a bit of a backstory about their race, um, their origins. This is the cinematic for Blood Elves. Uh, it does come with a narration, which I apologize you will not be able to hear, but it essentially it is a narrator talking about the origins of the Blood Elves and their new role in this world. As you slowly pan into the starter area from Eversong Woods, where we first zoned in, to Far Strider Square, where we just passed, and slowly but surely, and just a bit laggy. Sorry about that. We zone into the spot where your character will spawn. It's quite beautiful here, isn't it? It's like perpetual summer with these gorgeous gold and orange and red trees. They're so lovely. The Blood Elf starting area has always been pretty much my absolute favorite. It's like my go-to place in the game. It's where I feel I am at home. Ta-da! <clears throat> and here you are, Sunstrider Isle. Now, full disclosure, this is not normally what your UI or user interface will look like. I use a lot of mods and add-ons, and one of them is the UI. And it looks quite rather different um, normally than it does this, but I didn't want to really disable it because I would have to disable a lot of other things that I go with it in order to show it to you. So, you know, you guys will see it for yourselves if and when you try the game. I also kind of have like a setup that I do on every character. Like I separate, I separate my um, private messages and chat messages from system messages. I do a different window for that on the left just for ease of access. Because a lot of times when you are in an area where there's a lot of players speaking, like in trade chat or general chat sometimes as well, the chat will just be going non-stop and you, know, you'll, you can lose sight of important messages like something from your guild or a private message. You do have this useful option now where you can, <clears throat> you can choose to see the color of the class of the person speaking. And you can see the class colors on the right there. There's a list of them. So whenever someone sends a message in any of the chats, their name will come up in the color of their class. So for example, if I were to speak, if I were to type something, and this is enabled on their messaging system, my name will come up in that light blue color. So they'll know, oh, it's a mage talking. That might not seem like a particularly useful thing, but it very much can be when certain classes do certain things that not everybody can, and you might need specific help. For example, mages can create portals all over the world. Only they can do that. So if you see a mage talking in chat and you need a mage, you can just be like, oh, there's one right there, Arrowan. And they can send a private message and be like, hey, if you're not busy, would you mind porting me somewhere? That's sort of it. You can see my little add-ons on the mini-map down there. 
Normally that mini map is up on the upper right hand corner, but mine is down there. And when you hit C, you can see the things that your character has equipped. There's also a different tab for, you can see the titles that your character has. You're not going to start off with all these. These are a bunch that I've earned. And I have more than this actually, but it, they're not, they don't unlock until a later level, which is fine. So let's show you guys the, actually hold on, let me, there's something in my mailbox. Oh, there's a bit of a bug that that thing just pops up in your mailbox whenever you create a character. I just delete it. You just have to delete it every time. I'm not actually getting rid of it. It's already in my system. I just have to delete it from my mailbox because it just randomly pops up. It's just a little bug. But that was the mail. Yeah, you just, if you see mail icon, you right click. Um, <clears throat> you can, um, I'm going to, I'm going through my heirlooms here. Um, if you have these, now obviously not a, people are not going to start off with these, but these are pieces of gear that level up with you and they give you bonus XP experience when you level up, like 10% or 15% per item. So it helps you level up faster. And um, when you are at max out level, or I think at least level 70, you can start gaining access to these. You can just purchase them now. You used to have to grind them. It was very difficult to get them before, but now you can pretty much just buy them for some gold. And I always utilize them because, well, why level longer than you have to? So they also look pretty neat because, you know, there's a set for every type of um, gear type. You know, there's cloth, mail, plate, leather, and generally the sets match so which is kind of a problem up until you get to higher levels you'll pick up gear that upgrades but it's not gonna look very nice because the pieces don't go together but you don't have to worry about that at least until level 90 because your outfit matches because you have this BOA bind on account gear set so like I said when you are a high enough level you can in fact, you know, I don't even know if there is even a level of restriction for these anymore. They used to be super hard to get. There used to be restrictions of all kinds that you have to used to have to grind them. And I'm pretty sure now you can just go to your capital city and just purchase the set for just a bit of gold. So, you know, um, if you want to experience World of Warcraft fully, then maybe don't get these. But when you start making alternative characters, definitely get that to make leveling up easier because nobody wants to repeat the same thing and take forever. So I'm going to switch over to another character, <clears throat> this one here. She's just holding on to a bit of gold for me, <clears throat> a bit of golden materials from another character that I deleted. And I'm going to take these items and I'm going to mail them to myself on the brand new level one character that I just created. So she just has a little bit of a starting money so she can buy herself bags and whatnot because as you can see you only start with one bag the backpack it is a four it's a 16 slot bag and it's nice but you run out of room pretty quickly especially when you first start questing and you pick up everything so you can sell it all so that you can make money so the first thing you should do is buy bags so you have additional storage space inventory space which is what I'm going to be doing with my little bank alt here, who I'm going to delete as soon as I'm done with her. Sorry. You can go now. Thanks for your help. <laughs> I got what I wanted from her. That sounds terrible. <laughs> so there we go. Now I can log in to Erwan and we can get her some bags and I can show you guys what it's like to start out in WoW. We're not going to do too much, just a few basics here and there. There we go. See the mail icons popped up on my mini map below. And there are all my items. You can click open all and it will automatically take everything that's in your mailbox and open it into your inventory, which is fantastic. And by the way, that was not always the case. You used to have to manually open every single one. So that button is new and I love it. Okay, we're ready to go. 
Jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. Oh, I have that mount too. Let me see if I remember how to find it. You see, um... Hold on, let me just fix up my interface a little bit. There's, uh, you can see in the interface here, um, you can make changes for the combat, the display, different controls, like for example, you can auto loot when you right click, or you can select a key for it. You can block uh, trades or guild invites if you don't want people to open trade with you automatically, or if you don't want anybody to invite you to a guild, which will happen a lot, by the way, if you don't have a guild, like they'll just you'll get random invites from people you don't know just because they're trying to up their numbers you can choose how you see the nameplates for friendly and enemy players you can also just hit the V button to toggle them on or off but you can besides that go into it a little bit deeper and select what you want to show those things when you do hit V whether it would just be enemy units or their minions as well, things like that. And you can do either overlapping plates or stacking. You can play with your camera, your mouse. You can do a rail profile, just for, which is just for rating, just to make things easier. There's a lot of different things you can fool around with here to make things easier for yourself. Just to personalize the game a little bit. Obviously, you can choose the graphics and the sound as well. Now, I have an add-on to automatically accept quests just by right-clicking an NPC, which is a non-playable character like the one I just spoke to that had the exclamation point. But normally, you will right-click them and then it will give you quest text and you accept or decline. If you decline, well, then you don't have the quest. If you accept, then you have it. I just automatically accepted a quest to slay six mono worms. And on the right, the quest that you accept pops up. You can see it. It's called Reclaiming Some Strider Isle. And as you complete objectives in the quest, it will automatically update. So I've just killed my second mono worm. It is now two out of six. I apologize for the lag. It's um it's a fairly common thing when you have a recording software running simultaneously with a video game. I will try to tweak it so that next time maybe the frame rate or something will make it so that it's not so bad. But yeah, so you see, you click on the target, you click on the skill, and it goes off. Ah, I dinged. As in, I leveled up. It's a common term in WoW. If you say ding, that means you gained a level. Who those quests are ready to turn in? On your minimap, you can see a question mark, and that is the NPC you owe, owe that quest to. There's a large map as well, but it's, you know, you don't have to pull that up and see it. Okay, now I know I have that mount. I keep seeing everybody with that mount, and I... Here's the thing. You don't get mounts until level 20 minimum, but there's one single mount which is similar to the gear that I'm wearing. It is BOA, bind an account, and it is an heirloom mount just like the heirloom gear. It does not give you a bonus to leveling, but it levels up with you. And it is the only mount in the game that you can utilize as early as level one. Every other mount has to be at least level 20 or level 40 or higher, or you have to have a flying skill. This is the only one you can have from the very beginning. And you're not even really driving it. As you can see, you have a chauffeur and you are in the passenger coach. But that's fine because it's still faster than walking, albeit not very much so. And again, once you start creating alt alternate characters, because I know you're going to love this game and become obsessed with it like I did, <laughs> I highly recommend this. You get that you get this as well. After you experience the game the first time, you do everything in the long way the first time just to get the feel of it. And then once you start making alt, alternative characters, you get yourself some BOAs, buying an account, gear, mount, all that jazz to make your life easier. 
So we have a new quest now, as you can see on the right, Unfortunate Measures. This one is different than the first one where you just flat out have to kill an X amount of mobs. Mobs is monsters. In this one, you have to collect mats, materials. And you have to kill the monsters that will drop the items you need and then loot them and hope that they will have the item. Now, I've killed about four cats. That will be number five, but I've only gotten four collars. So this is a good example of the fact that you will not always get the item you need just because you killed the mob that carries it. Sometimes you will, sometimes you will not. Oh, I forgot these two kids are here. They're cute little blood elf children with their little kitties. And the random little homeless guy sleeping. One thing that I love about this game is the quality of the water. You can see the island in the distance there, which is a high-level island. Back in Burning Crusade, you used to um, go there as a high-level to do dailies, which is quests that reset every day for special rewards. <clears throat> but um, this, the water in this game did not always look this lovely. And you can certainly change the settings so that it looks how it used to look if you're nostalgic or just don't want to um, use up a lot of your computer's CPU if it can't handle it. But it's, um, I have it on Ultra because I love it and uh, it's, it's a big deal to me to have realistic looking water. Also, as you can see, your characters can swim, they can even dive, and when you go underwater you get that breath bar that you see there, which eventually does go down. So if you don't get to the surface like this, at which point the breath bar disappears, eventually the breath bar will get to zero and you'll start taking damage and you will perish. <clears throat> but you can swim and you don't necessarily have to dive underwater. Okay, we got our last two Lynx Collars. Here we go. We finished our quest. We see the question mark on the mini-map. We're heading towards it to hand the quest in. And I forgot that I have a mount again. <laughs> and I'm running everywhere. It takes forever. You right click, you either select a prize or a prize is automatically given to you. Well, not a prize, a, um, a piece of gear or whatever. You have, see those, uh, there's a bunch more exclamation points around us now on the mini-map and those are all newly available quests. Now I'm going to go try to sell some things because my bag is almost full. I only have one slot left. Um, the NPCs that when you hover over them your cursor looks like a little bag, like a pouch. Those are NPCs that you can interact with to either buy or sell items. And to sell, you just right click the item that you don't want and you can sell it to them. You can buy it back later if for some reason you didn't mean to sell something. But if you log out, that will disappear. So be careful. Okay, this time I remembered. <laughs> So I'm not going to keep questing here because it's going to be kind of boring. Um, I'm just going to hand in this last one. And we're going to move on from here. I'm just going to show you the area a bit. It's so, so lovely. The driving is going to be a little bit erratic because I'm like trying to drive properly with one hand but I'm holding down the camera with the mouse so that you guys can like see you can look around so if I'm driving weird that's why because I'm like I'm doing two conflicting camera views <laughs> but I just want you guys to see how freaking gorgeous this place is it's just so beautiful oh isn't that just lovely and those are ruins these this is the part that's like falling apart this isn't even like the quote-unquote good side of the city, but yeah, it's lovely. And as I mentioned before, um, the trees are always, they're evergreen but gold, so they're like ever gold and ever red trees. They're always like the lovely, lovely golden color 
or orangey or reddish color. Except for the shrubs and such, you won't really see any green trees here at all, which is fine. It is a uniquely blood elf type of foliage. Their architecture is also quite elven, if I do say so myself, with the spires and, and large wings and the crystals. Well, the crystals are only, mostly due to their mana addiction, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> I do believe the narrator tells you a little bit about that when you first zone into the game. This is Falcon 1 Square. It is the first like little square you see when you make a, a blood elf, and you are heading through the gates into Eversong Woods, this is the forest surrounding the Blood Elven Castle. This little zone on the left here, actually. When you die, this is one of the little graveyard spots where your character would pop up in. And when you're dead, you will see a spirit healer there, which you cannot see now because we are alive. And you can either run to your body from there, or you can talk to the spirit healer and revive on the spot for a penalty. This is called the Dead Scar. This is where the the Scourge marched onto the Blood Elves, according to lore. Um, if you ever do decide to play Blood Elves, I, there would be extensive information about this and what all happened here. It's, it's a pretty compelling story, actually. So we are headed towards the main gates of Silver Moon City. Well, let me guys, let me show you guys this bit on the left here. Um, this is a, <clears throat> this is a Dragonhawk Master. Dragonhawks are the flying mounts of choice for the Blood Elves, and when you click on them, you can choose a different city to fly to. This is the transportation inside the game. You talk to one of these flying masters, you click on the destination you want to fly to, and you will be flown there for a small fee. It's basically one of the main ways to transport to the to and from different places in the game. Ignore that floof of sparkles on the left there. That was from the Winter Veil vale event, which is no longer happening when you guys are going to see this video. That was a winter holiday. But yeah, so flying like that is basically the main way to get around. The other way would be to fly manually with your own flying mount and or teleporting. So I'm going to do first person view here so you guys can just see around. We are within Silver Moon City now. And this is it. It is also quite beautiful as you can see. In retrospect, I probably should have removed the UI so you guys can see a little bit better, but <laughs> hindsight's 2020. And again, the Christmas trees will not be here when you play, unless you decide to play in December of uh, this year, because December is past by this point. I actually made this video like in the beginning of December, which is why all the Christmas trees and all the holiday stuff is around there. The game does have holidays, um, and they usually are parallel to real world holidays. As in this example, the Feast of Winter Vale is very much like Christmas. So, here is one of the main wings of Silver Moon City. We are heading towards a bank, Royal Exchange Bank. There are two banks in the city. Every major city will have a bank. And you can either speak to an NPC, non-playable character, to access your personal bank, which, as you can see, I don't have anything in mind. This character is brand new. Well, that's new, our agent bank. Or if you click on the thing behind him, which I can't access because I'm not in a guild, it will open the guild bank for you. And that's the bank for the whole guild to access. But your access, of course, is determined by your rank in said guild. Now, heading on to <clears throat> the auction house, where you can trade items. Auction house is where you can buy or sell items, any kind of items you can imagine. From reagents, to food, to mounts, to pets, to gear, you simply right click the NPC and you can see, you can also actually buy game time there now, this is a new thing. You can legally sell your token for gold in the game or use gold to buy said token to prolong your game time. You have these two options now which is quite, quite wonderful. 
It is basically a legal way to buy gold in the game. But anyway, you select the thing you want, or you type in the search bar the item that you're seeking. And when you purchase something through the auction house, it'll pop up in your mailbox. Or when you sell something in the auction house, um, it will usually automatically suggest a price, but you can, of course, set a different one. <clears throat> so. Where can I take you guys? I think I should show you... Um... By the way, you can access all your add-ons and you can select which add-ons are on and which are off for each character. For example, I don't have Click enabled on this character because Click is a healing add-on and it will just take up space on my UI without being used. Same with Decursive and Grid. Pet Tracker is not for healing, but I just don't want to use it right now. Um, you, as you can see, I have a lot of it. It's actually not quite that many. There's only about 26 or so, but some have multiple components, so it seems like there's a lot. But anyway, I can't imagine playing this game without add-ons at this point. But yeah, so, um, uh, da -da -da -da. oh, by the way, you see how it says you feel rested on the upper, on the, on the lower left, and then on the upper left, when you look at my character, it has a like Z's. When you are in a major city, or in a small city, or anywhere where there's an inn available, um, you will get rest your character can rest and what that means is your experience will be higher than that when you're not rested so when you're not rested you're just gaining a hundred percent of experience boa gear notwithstanding when you are rested you gain 200 percent experience so it is always good if you're still leveling up to log out in a place where there's an inn where the little z's will appear by your character so you can get rested experience, and then when you log out, when you log in next and start playing, you'll get 200 times the experience. We're headed now towards the leader of the Blood Elves. As you can see from the grandiose red carpet entrance. Hey, guard. You know if you do slash salute when you select a guard, they have to salute you back. Check it out. Oh, so you can click on them for directions. See, he's laying back, but yeah. If you click on any guard in any city, you can select any one of those things and it'll show you where to go. For example, we're trying to go to Ogamar, which is on a different continent. So he puts a marker on the mini map, as you can see there, that little red flag, where you can see it on the large map. You just hit M and M will show you the large map. And then you'll know where to go. We're going to follow the little red flag with the exclamation point. That is the teleporter that's going to take us to... Oop, sorry about that. I dismounted when... You dismount automatically when you're indoors and... Yeah. Also, you can obviously have friends in this game. And you can now just add them through battle.net, which is an app. And so even if they're not playing the same game you are, you can still talk to them and interact with them with their battle tag. You can see one on the top there, the Arrowan. Hashtag 1960. Feel free to add me. So there's our fearless leader. Well, I say our. Us Blood Elves. He's the one in the middle. Lorthamar Theron. So we're going up here. We're going to access a teleportation orb, which is going to take us to a different continent because the Blood Elves are... You can't really get here any other way. Oh, look, somebody just poured it in. That's a high-level hunter and her really cool pet. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there's only two ways to get in here. Um, well, no, three. You can teleport through this device. which You just right-click and it teleports you to Undercity, which is the undead capital city. And from there, you can take a zeppelin to Ogamar, which is just the general horde capital city. But it's also the stronghold for the orcs. Or you can fly there using one of the um, flying masters. Or you can manually get there from um, one of the playground zones. But it is rather difficult if you're not at the right level. So, we just appeared very laggily at the Undercity. 
This is not the Undercity itself. This is the ruins of Lordaeron, which used to be a human castle. Oh my goodness. Hello. <laughs> oh, we got ourselves a little Sandman. He looks cute. Anywho, uh, this is the ruins of Lordaeron, which used to be a human city. And now the undead and their queen hold court beneath these ruins in what is now called the Undercity. Uh, because you see that we were a uh, joining channel trade and that's because you're in a major city. You can only see the trade channel when you are in a major city. And it's right below us. But that's not what we're here for. We're actually going to be exiting out. Maybe in a future video I'll, I'll show you guys what all of the cities look like if you'd like. We're heading out right now to the Zeppelins which will take us to the stronghold for the Horde. The Horde faction capital city, which is Ogamar, and that is our Zeppelin leaving right now. That big old dirigible up there that you guys see heading away, yeah, that's the Zeppelin, and that is the one we were supposed to catch, but that's okay. They come every five minutes or so. We're gonna go up the spiral. Another one of those little holiday bits. This is Terrace Fall Glades, which is the surrounding forest for the Undercity area. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of what an under, of what an undead sort of little town looks like. That's Brill right there. Looks very um, Halloween-esque. That planet over there is Argus, which is the planet where we head in the newest expansion, Legion. But that is also a tale for another time. So we're going to head up the spiral here to the platform. And wow. Oh my goodness. Is that what I think it is? Oh, this guy has a very, very rare mount called the Time Loss Proto Drake. It is extremely difficult to get still to this day because it drops from a rare spawn which I think only spawns once every 24 hours, but people are constantly hunting it so the damn thing is never up. It's like impossible to find it. Oh, he's so lucky. I've been wanting them out forever. Someday I'll get it. Every so often I'll just like go to that zone and fly around for hours just trying to find the rare spawn that carries the mount. <clears throat> So we wait up here until the, the Zeppelin arrives. The other Zeppelin just arrived, although, um, well, I can't see it. Where is it? Am I crazy? The, the, the little bruiser guys on the, on the sides here are usually call out, and you can read that text of the entire zone because it's the yell function. Um, but I don't actually see the Zeppelin. I don't think we're quite so zoomed out that we can't see it, so I'm not really, maybe, you know what, we've had a bug before where they would yell out that the Zeppelin was there and it actually wasn't, or they would like not yell out when the Zeppelin came and it actually was there, so maybe that's what happened. I'm just gonna dance. By the way, every um, every race and gender have their own specific dance taken from famous dances and the female blood elves happens to be Toxic by Britney Spears. Yeah. I can't really say I'm terribly fond of it, but... Okay, now see, he's yelling that our Zeppelin's here and I'm not seeing one, like... <laughs> There's no Zeppelin, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Huh. I mean, I don't see this dude getting on. Oh. Log out, then in. Oh my goodness. You know what it is? It must be a bug. We can't see it, so we have to log out and then back in. Serious. Okay, cool, dude. We're going to do that then. I appreciate that. I'm glad that he said something to me. I would have... I haven't played in a while, so I would have no clue that I have to do this. So thank you for that, Mr. Hunter, which I can tell because see his text is green, that means Hunter. 
All right, we're going to log out, and then we're going to log back in, and hopefully the next time that the Zeppelin arrives, we will actually be able to see it and get on it. Here we go. <laughs> Insert wild music here. <laughs> That's more BlizzCon music, actually, but meh. Who's gonna judge me? I mean, if somebody's watching this for the first time and they don't know about WoW, they wouldn't know anyway. Although, well, I did just out myself, so. Oh, it doesn't matter. Come on, loading screen. Faster, faster, faster. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Awesome. It worked. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's um, try this again, shall we? I don't know if that dude is just like left before me or... Oh, okay. We can see the Zeppelin on the other side. That's the Howling Fjord Zeppelin that we didn't see earlier. So we should be able to see ours next. Awesome. Great. I appreciate the tip, but sigh at having to wait all over again for a brand new Zeppelin. Uh, gross sobbing. <laughs> Slash cry. By the way, to do actions, you just type in slash in the action that you want to do, and your character will emote it. Like, for example, when I did slash sigh, my character sighed, and she made a sound effect. When I did slash cry, she sobbed <laughs> and put her, and wiped her eyes, I think, and her nose and things like that. So meanwhile, um, I collect mounts. And you can see an inventory of them here. I have 179 in total. You can see which ones are horde. They have a horde icon next to them. The ones that don't have that icon are alliance, so they cannot be accessed by this character. None of them can be accessed now because I'm too low, but um, and as you can see, there is quite a bit of mounts in the game, period. I mean, a massive amount. Um, I have pets as well. I have 324. And, but there's a lot more mount, uh, pets sorry, than that, and now the game has a system called Battle Pet, so you, can, you have a team of three pets that you've leveled up, or can continue to level up, and you can use them to battle other pets, or use them to capture new ones. It's very much kind of Pokemon-esque. There's also random toys and such in the game, which is just random things for fun. They don't necessarily do anything, they don't buff your character, but they just do silly things like, for example, if I use the shell, it simulates like the Venus de Milo painting and puts my character into a shell in her bikini with bubbles. That's an example of a toy. They're just for fun. So our Zeppelin's here, we're going to get on. And you saw the heirloom tab already. This keeps track of all the BOA items you have. And appearances keeps tag a tab of all of the different like outfits your character can wear. People collect them sometimes. I used to. Yep. It's all the different options she has. So here we are. On this Zeppelin. So, um... Here we are. I apologize if you hear any noises in the background. Um, you guys already know my parents are loud and obnoxious and annoying. I'm going to stand on the front here so that you guys can get like a bird's eye view of where we're heading out. Now, you're not going to see the whole route of the Zeppelin, obviously. It would be impossible, especially in the case of this one, um, because we're heading to a different continent. Again, I know it seems kind of silly. We just came from the continent, but we kind of have to do this doubt this U-turn double back sort of thing. But anyway, you do kind of get to see where you're headed initially on the Zeppelin. You see a little bit of the world. And then after a while, you just see a loading screen. Now, the little bullseye is your starter point. 
that's where you're coming from and the X marks the spot is where you are headed so right now we are on the Eastern Kingdoms continent and as you can see by the little route of dots we're headed towards Kalimdor and we're going to where the X is all those other um, lands you see there are for much higher levels <laughs> Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor are were the first two to exist in World of Warcraft. It was just the two. So here's hoping that um, the screen loads fast enough so that we can get off the Zeppelin. Sometimes that happens if your computer isn't very quick. Um, by the time the loading screen goes away, the Zeppelin already turned around and you kind of are like, oh no, you have to jump off so you don't zone right back into the continent you started from. Come on. Let's get to Ogumar. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, my lordy. That lag. Goodness gracious. That looks awful. Okay, here we go. <laughs> we made it. Now to get off the Zeppelin before we're stuck on it. Okay, let me get off really quickly. It's going to be even laggy here, so I apologize for that. Um, so here's Ogumar. This is the capital city for the orcs and the capital city period for the Horde faction, which is the faction we are part of now. I apologize in advance for the lag. Um, Ogumar has a nickname, Lagrimar, for a reason. Whoa, that thing down there looks fun. You know what? Um, okay, I gotta get down from here, and I can't jump because I'm too low level, so it'll kill me, and I don't feel like running on my corpse. <laughs> Because I will spawn somewhere really far, so we're going to go ahead and take the long way down the stairs like a peon. Oh my goodness, that lag. Wow. That run into the wall lag. <laughs> That's awful. Alright, here we go. I'm just going to walk in here because I just want to see what this is. Um, oh, look at that! I turned into a goblin! Oh, that's cute! And I'm wearing a little Santa outfit. Well, <clears throat> oh my, Sienna baby outfit. Oh, when you jump, you float. Okay, 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 I get it. This is a giant snow globe. Okay. And we're like the snow floating around in it. Okay, I get it. That's cute. All right. That's very cute. I haven't seen that before. <clears throat> Again, you're not always going to see this, guys. Feast of Wintervale. So here's an example of another riding master. This guy, his... Flying mounts are wind riders, so he's the wind rider master. You talk to him, you choose where to go, and there you go. It'll fly you there. If for some reason you can't fly yourself or port yourself or utilize other means of transport. Now, I am too lazy to keep taking the long way, so I think if I just, um, I'm going to pick a spot to jump on here where it's not going to hurt me terribly. Let's see, where can I go? Ooh, I can go on those, um, those little awnings there, and maybe kind of slowly make my way down. Alright, let me see. I'm going to go down on that. Whee! Oh, no, I can't really jump on the roof from here. Oh, poop. Alright, you know what? Screw it. Uh, bonsai! Thud. I survived! Alright! Okay, we're good. <laughs> I'll heal up fast, no worries. So, this is Ogomar. You can access a lot more things here than you could normally in a small city. There's, of course, the standard things like the auction house and the bank, which I'm going to show you guys now. The difference being, however, that the ones in here are going to be much more populated than the ones in Silvermoon because there's a lot more players here, as you can see. I'm going to take you into Gromesh Hold first, where we have our fearless leader, the leader of the horde. Who is not there? Seat is empty. That's weird. Hmm. Yeah, that's no, not him. That's just like the helper dude. Oh, you know what? The leader might be somewhere else right now. I don't really want to give away anything from the storyline, so I'm not going to say where the leader is. You guys can totally figure that out for yourselves if you're interested. But um, the leader used to be there in that chair, and that leader was not just the leader of the orcs, but the leader of the entire horde faction all the races within it. So as you can see there's a lot more players here because it's a very more common area to congregate. People usually will go to like 
the major, the place where the leader of the whole faction is, is where people will hang out. Even though we have a new, like, major city hangout for this expansion, people will still go here. I just want to check out what these little holiday sellers guys have. I haven't played in a while and I'm just like, maybe they have something new? Oh my goodness, this lag. Look at this. This is terrible. I'm so sorry. Okay, so they have cute little things like like wrapping paper to make presents and snowballs. They have a, a Winter Veil sweater. Got a Winter Veil sweater is the equivalent of an ugly Christmas sweater. I think I'm going to get one of these. Yeah, um, what's cool about this is that it's it's not just a piece of the of, of cloth that you can put on. It is. It also has a use. So when you right click it, it plays a little holiday song. <clears throat> it's super cute. I'm just gonna put it on. I just want to see what it looks like. <clears throat> oh, I just got the achievement. The other guy just has consumables, drinks and snacks, and they just replenish your health and your secondary characteristic which is usually mana you usually can't re replenish things like rage or energy with consumables um, I'm just gonna get myself some bags I did mention before that that's one of the first things that you should do I'm not gonna get the expensive bags no I get the cheapest bags you can get that are still like the largest and those happen to be the netherweave bags. They're the same amount as the book bag, they're 16 slots a piece. They only usually go for like 25 to 45 gold depending on the server you're on. Um, they are bind and equip so um, they're not bound to your character until you equip them and then you cannot put them on any other character. That's the difference between as you guys can see here, by the way, so you have purchased something from the auction house and it goes to my mailbox, and here we go. You know, I can equip those bags. But the difference between, um, if that's a buy and equip item, anybody can use it until you equip it to yourself. Um, if it's a buy and pick up item, BOP as opposed to BOE, it's as soon as you pick the item up, it will equip you automatically. You cannot trade it to anybody else. In BOA, we've covered before that was buying an account. So any of the characters on your entire account regardless of their class or race or um, server can utilize those items those very special items look at the sweater isn't that cute <laughs> it's definitely gaudy but in a sweet sort of way I like it I'm gonna keep it I'll put it in my bag well in my bank I'll put it in my bank later I think we get a new one every year hmm Alright, so I'm going to head up <clears throat> to a place where uh, called the Transmogrifier, which is new. This is only a couple expansions ago that this was implemented, but what they can do is they can change your existing gear to look like other gear. Or like in my case, all I really want to do right now is to hide my back piece. <clears throat> and you can buy stuff from them now. Oh, that's cool. Alright. Anywho, you go to I want to transmogrify my gear, and as you can see here, it'll show you the different options that you can change your gear to look to. For example, if I want, I can make my headpiece look like that crown instead. For a fee, of course. It costs you a little bit of money to do that. I think the higher level you are, or the different kind of items they are, the, the more they will cost. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to click on the back piece, and I'm not going to choose a different appearance for the back piece. Instead, I'm going to click hidden so that you can't see it at all. Because I prefer it that way. And what I'm also going to do, I think, is maybe change the appearance of my staff. Because I have a way cooler appearance for that. <clears throat> Let me just find it. Oh, where is it. Ah, there it is. The replica staff of Gul'dan. Ooh, that looks so much more badass than what I have right now. I don't have a lot of selection now because of my level, but as you get higher, you get more and more choices. I, before, I think it used to be that you had to actually own the item in order to be able to transmog the appearance of it onto your character. Now, you just have to get a higher level and you can select it from the menu. It's pretty great. You see that staff? Isn't that badass looking? Well, Dan was a major character and... Um, Again, I don't want to give you any spoilers, so you guys can look stuff up about him, but... 
I'm going to take out one of my little matching pets. I like to match. <laughs> there he is. My little bright paw. You can rename the pets also. Um, you can keep the names that they actually have or you can assign a name to them. In the case of my little guy, I call them Spaz. And uh, look at him running around. Look, he's so cute. I have a matching mount for him as well. You could see that in a previous video. <clears throat> or you can see that in a later video. Yeah, there's a matching mount for him. Let me see if I can find it just to show you guys. Like a picture of it so you guys can see. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is he? I don't remember exactly what it's called, so it's kind of a pain to find it because there's so many mounts on my list. There it is, Mr. Green Saber. You see? It matches him perfectly. This is one of the first times where they had like a matching mountain pet set that you could get. Now there's a couple more options for that. Oh, see, look at him go. You see him jumping around? That's why I called him Spaz, because he's like, choom, choom, choom. Zig zag zig. Cutie. All right. You know what, guys? Um, I think that's about it. That's all I'm going to show you guys for today. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information. This video is probably already, whoa, what mount is that? Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> wow, I haven't played it in a while. There's a lot of new mounts for me to collect. That's like the one thing I do in this game, like as far as being a completionist. I collect mounts and pets, mostly mounts, also titles. Mounts, pets, titles. Those are like my three top things to collect. But the mounts are always like the number one thing. I love, 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 love different mounts. And this Christmas tree here, um, on Christmas Day, the presents around the tree are going to have exclamation points. And when you click on them, you get presents. So that's great grandfather Winter. He's like our version of Santa Claus in this game. Anywho, um, like I said, I'm not going to overwhelm you guys. This video is already super long. So you've learned some basics for a while today, World of Warcraft. I will do more videos like this. And I will give info in my description box for how you guys can check out this game as well. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.